Rick here. Now I previously completed an article and video on importing Zotero papers into Obsidian using the Zotero integration plugin. Due to the inclusion of properties in Obsidian, the front matter structure of course has changed. So this video discusses the changes in Obsidian and their incorporation into the template. An updated template is available for those who have already downloaded it and there is a link to where you can access the template if you haven't already downloaded it. Either way, the functionality of the template is considerably improved through the use of properties. So what are properties? Well, properties significantly enhance Obsidian's functionality and their addition is greatly appreciated. A prior issue with YAML, yet another markdown language, as that's what it stands for apparently, a front matter was its flexibility. So it could lead to disarray and an unmanageable vault over time because everything could be very unstructured. Now properties now formalise the front matter in a much better way and will assist you in providing standardisation for the notes that can remain consistent over time. While YAML used a single colon, Obsidian also provided use for the double colon which allowed fields inside of notes and also the extraction of information using data view queries. So this new consistency benefits aspects such as Zotero integration templates, although it does rely on Zotero properties remaining unchanged as well. Such consistency allows the two applications to work in harmony with one another. So this is all provided simply to put some context around the discussion on the Zotero integration. So let's have a look at our properties field. So here on the screen you can see that I have the properties up and this is the template file itself and I've already set up the properties and I've included a new one called type and I've named it as Zotero import. Now you can change that to whatever you like and I'll show you how to do that shortly. There's no value for the parent, child or the siblings but they can be added after you import your note and the tags, the tags are specific to Obsidian. But the keywords, which are below, they actually come from Zotero. You can see that there is a field there called All Tags. So in Zotero, they're actually called tags, and yet when they come across, they're called keywords. So it can be quite confusing at times. But remember, tags are unique to Obsidian, and the keywords come from Zotero. Aliases. Whatever you like to put in there, I am a prolific user of both tags and aliases so that I can always find notes. The publisher will bring in the publisher title. The site key is the citation key from Zotero. It is not the academic citation key that you would use in a, a formal article. And your DOI will also come in from Zotero providing you with a link back to an article from within Zotero. Now the created date is worthwhile mentioning here because the created date is, if I pull in the created date from Zotero, it'll bring in the date that the article was actually put into Zotero. So what we want here is the date that has come into Obsidian and been created there. This can be changed to bring in the date that was created by Zotero, but that's up to you. It means changing those fields. If you change your note subsequent to that, well, then you can always go in and change the date by hitting on the, the modification. And here it is in source mode. So you can see that the properties go between three hyphens and top and bottom, same as the old YAML did. It has one colon after the field type, and that's consistent all the way through. And then these are what you will put in and change. So if you wanted to change that, you could just put Zotero and then when you went back into source mode and actually used it, it would actually just simply show Zotero, not Zotero note. So I'll go back there and change that again. Or Zotero import, whatever, whatever you like. The keywords, they're the fields there. They're the fields for the other items that are coming in as well. And the rest of it there is also in just the source, just for you, so you can see. But that's what it looks like in the background. And this is what it looks like 
when you're just in reading mode. Okay, now in a previous video and article, link up here, I trust, uh, I showed you how to set up the Zotero plugin and there have been no significant changes to that process. It's only the properties that we're really talking about in this video. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the process, I suggest you check out that article and video. There are links in the show notes and within the article as well where you can go and check it. You also need to ensure that your citation formats are correct, your bibliography formats are correct in the Zotero integration plugin, and also that you've set up the Better Bibtex plugin within Zotero itself. So with the new template, in invoking the control panel within Obsidian, you can do that by pressing Control and P, and then type ZOT for Zotero, or alternately, you can set up a hotkey for the process. So I've set that to Control and Z. So here, I'll just make sure I'm in there. Yes, I am. Control and Z, and then it's going to pull up the Zotero selector. I'll just select Hargs article here and confirm that. And you can see here that it's pulled this Zotero article in and created a new note. Now, the properties here have all now been populated. It's got Zotero import. It hasn't put those values in because there's nothing there. Uh, it's brought in some keywords of business planning and business consulting, which were the tags in Zotero. No value for the aliases at this stage. The publisher was a journal called Workplace Health and Safety. There's the citation key from Zotero and the DOI, and it's got today's date as being the created date that it came into Obsidian. So I can amend these properties now that it's in there, and I can put a, uh, a couple of tags there like MBA, no, that won't work, MBA, uh, and another tag that I often use on learning, um, and that will be fine there. Uh, I'm not worried about assignment two. Well, parent, I might put in this one, map of content for business consulting. And aliases, well, I could just put in business consulting. And there's an alias in there as well. So that is all there is to it. And that's all done now. That note's ready to go and continue annotation. There's nothing really in it at the moment, but I will show you the abstract. Uh, that's there and the metadata that it's brought in. Now this is just by the way I'm using the new prism theme and the last video I did which was yesterday shows you how to set that up uh, like this if you're interested. Apart from the inclusion of properties and setting those up the template has not changed it's still exactly the same as it was before. I will mention one thing though and that is when your article originally comes into Zotero, make sure you fill out as much information at that time as you possibly can. It will save you a lot of time if you're bringing them into Obsidian and then having to chase around after DOIs or web links or other things of that nature. Now, Properties adds a new dimension to the Zotero integration and in my view, enhances the power of what are two absolutely great applications. Hope you enjoy the new template and properties and look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.